Okay. Starting a little bit into it, but whatever. I'll edit in the beginning. Um, yeah, so this little button up in the corner here, that's run. And you should see it come up with this sort of 600 by 600 square gray window. Now let's put something inside that. So just like that, we'll do, uh, just like we created the um, size, we'll be making a triangle. And instead of just having two things, as with the two, it's the length and the width of the window. Uh, with the triangle, we need three points. And those points have to be given x and y, like you're on a graph. Um, this is what the processing window looks like to the program. Is you've got basically yeah, an x and a y, and it starts at zero, zero up in the top corner. And the more, the bigger the number, the more towards the bottom uh, right corner um, that point will be. If you have any questions throughout this, just shout them out. Um, so let's create a triangle. And for a triangle, we need to have three points. So that means six numbers. Um, so the first point of the triangle will be at 100, 300. The second point of the triangle will be at 300, 100. And the third point of the triangle will be at 500, 300. So I'll create a thing like that. So if you can like see here, you know how the triangle can tell? So you get your head in the white corner. And you provide Breach. two separate yeah. points to that. And if you hit play, that'll create a little triangle on there. Now it's boring if it's white. So let's add some color to it. <laughs> and you do that. Um, you do that sort of like um, how you would do it with a paintbrush. So with a paintbrush, you would uh, dip the brush into some ink and then draw the triangle. And so for this, what we do is we set the fill. So this is what color is filling the um, triangle. What color of, of paintbrush we put in. So you just put the fill above, above the triangle. Each part, each part, yeah. Part each part that you want to do. Uh, and we can set that using RGB. So red, let's make this a red triangle. So you put three numbers, red, green, and blue. Just a side note, because yep. you have to end each line with, what are they called? Semicolons. Semicolons, because that's just the way Parkinson recognizes each individual line. Uh, you can do some weird things with that. Do you want to just like make them all in one line? Yeah. So you can do things like this. Where like you can have them all on one line. You can have these like because we have a semicolon. Um, it's not necessary, and it looks it, ugly. most programmers will say don't do that. I will say don't do that. But you can do it if you really want to make one really long line that is a program. <laughs> but yeah. So now that we've colored it red. So you would create a red triangle if you press play. Yeah, if you have any questions, ask. Yes? My size is going to be like that's six points there. So just continue on while Ben helps Peter with that. Um, so we've just used the triangle function, but there's also other shapes you can draw in processing such as rectangles, and you can find like all the different shapes you can draw on the web page that Karina's on. Um, we'll probably post a link to that later, but with a rectangle, you would want to give all four points instead of three. Oh no, you'd want to give only two points, sorry. Um, so the top left point and the bottom right point, if you want to draw a rectangle. Uh, so we'll go 150, 300, 300, 200. Have I messed it up? Hope not. 
Yeah, if anyone else has the problem where it fills up the screen. Now you can see here, like since we didn't change the fill color, um, it just stays that red. It's like you haven't dipped it into a new brush. So you can just, you'll have to add a new fill value and we can make this green. So in the RGB, that would be 0, 255, 0. Same for lines, like the H, the, the yes, that yes. would be the, um, what do they call the edge, right? Or it would be stroke. Stroke, yes. Yeah. So if you want to do the edges, so right now you can see um, if you look really closely at it. Sorry, I'll just yeah. add. Um, stroke if you want to uh, yeah. change the outline color. Um, yeah, there are also ways white. to remove it. Yeah, white, the most creative color. Um, so here you can see, like, when you change the stroke, which works very similar to the fill. Just the outline of your shape. Imagine you're on like Photoshop and stuff. Yeah, and you can change the size of that with um, stroke width, and you can also have like do things like no stroke and things like that. Um, but yeah. Okay, so I think some of you can probably figure out what we're <laughs> what we're making here. Let's go ahead and cover a few more shapes. So we got a triangle, we got a rectangle. Um, let's add a circle in. Yeah, so most of these are just circle. Uh, circle works a little bit differently. Uh, you put in three numbers. You put in a point, so two coordinates, x, y for a point, and that is the center of the circle. And then you put in a radius. So. How many pixels? How many pixels wide? Do you do stuff in degrees or the radians? Uh, radius? Radius, uh, as in like the radius. Angle, uh, yes, yeah. that's a bit. Um, I think it's default is radians, though. Ra default is radians, um, okay. but yeah, you can do angle calculations. I believe there is some stuff in there. Um, we can look at that. But yeah, so for this, we'll just do a two hundred. Always mess around with these. Let's make this a white circle. So now a neat trick that you can do also with the fill command is you don't actually have to put in all of the numbers if you just want a like grayscale thing, because a white is 255, 255, 255. Um, so if you just put in one number, then it'll just pretend that you did it in all three. Um, so that's how you, you put zero in, just zero for black, and just 255, which is the maximum value, um, to get a little white window. So what were the um, units for the circle? Okay, so the first one is the X. Yeah. The oh, it's second the is the Y, and then the radius. Okay, yeah. And does it come, it comes out from the, the center. center, yeah. Is there an easy way to find these commands and what? Yes. So uh, if you want to do more research on what these commands are afterwards. Not that. If you go to the processing uh, website yeah. and you click on reference, then this has all of the commands that you would ever need. Um, for instance, if we go and look at um, where are they? Here we go. Circle. Let's click on circle, and that'll tell us exactly what they need. Um, so yeah, you just go to processing, click reference, and then we've got this. It, it gives us an example of how to use it, and it tells us exactly what um, of these. Can you do math within that circle? Right? Yes. Yeah. So they just need numbers, but you could do things like but you could do it outside HTML search or some. Yeah, you can do you can, circle based on. You can do things like this if you really want to. Oh, yeah, cool. Do 200, 200 minus 52, and you'll create a house with a little bit of a yeah. offset window. Um, so yeah, as long as it ends up with a float, uh, if you know what if you know what variables are, um, which we can cover in a bit. We will cover in a second. 
Um, yeah, so that's that, that's basically what you need for shapes. There are a few more shapes, which you can find out more about on here. Um, if you want to find out more about them, uh, we'll be using ellipse in a second, which is basically just a circle with an extra parameter so that you can make it an oval. And then, yeah, there's all kinds of things like checking if the mouse is ever clicked or buttons are ever clicked. Looking at files. Like yes, so that would be here. We can look at it and we can look at line. And that is, you just need to give it two points. Um, and that's the starting point and the end point. So if we want to do something here, we could go line. Uh, let's. Spaces don't matter? White space? No. Uh, yeah, most of the time, no. Why have you got the comma and a bracket? Zero. Yeah. So the thing so now about the line is that it'll end up only using the stroke color? Yeah, so it's a bit hard to see. So yeah, let's, so right. yeah, so what you, you can do is go... You can use stroke width. How's it? What's it? Uh, wait. So it doesn't do in blue, you're typing out the wrong stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Still goes wrong. Because I haven't spelt it correct. And the capital W doesn't matter either. The capital W does matter. So you need, so most of the time, most, uh, pretty much all of them, if they're multiple words, it'll be lowercase and then capital W. Ah, okay. So it's yeah, commonly called cap camel case. Well, sometimes it's not called camel case. <laughs> anyway, it, yeah, it's basically it has capitals on every word other than the first one. Um, so we can do like something ridiculous, and if we hit run, it's going to create a very thick line on that spot that we chose. Move it to the right, like it's chilling. All right, all right. <laughs> this should be. That's a little bit more to the right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that's how you can create a house. That's all. The, that's basic shapes. Um, now move on to something else. So if you're going to choose the background color, you just put a fill on both sides. Uh, okay. So background background color is actually done a bit specially. Um, let's actually do that now. So you write in the term background, and then you can set it to you can set it to colors or to images, can you? Uh, yes, you can also put images into the background. Um, so for instance, I've done a sort of navy blue background now, just by putting that background up there. It always has to be up. Size has to be first. Size has to be first because it'll it needs to draw the actual window first. Okay. Um, I believe there is a default size. Sometimes. So. Yeah, there is a default size, but it's can't drag it onto the screen. <laughs> it is. Um, very small. It's it's too small. I can't even grab the top to grab it. So I would recommend doing size before anything. Um, yeah. Eh. Yes. So let's make something a little fun. So in all programming languages, there's things called variables, which are basically uh, names that you can attach to various things like a number, a word, an input, algebra. anything. It's Yeah, it's sort of like algebra where you would have x, y plus x equals blank, um, but uh, yeah, and then the y and the x can be swapped out for actual numbers. Um, 
Same thing with variables. They point at actual numbers. They're a box. They have numbers inside them, however you want to visualize it. For instance, uh, I could go So I could do this. Um, here, and basically what it's saying is it is an integer, which is a number without a floating point, so without point zero zero four or whatever. Um, it can be any negative or positive number, and zero. Um, and then an integer which is called x is equal to 100. That's what this is saying. And then I can go through here and I can just replace these sorts of things, anything that says 100 really, with x. Not what I'd actually do, I'd put it inside specific things so that I could make changes to it later. Let's go ahead and just do it for that actually. So that way you can see, if I hit run, nothing has changed because it's set to 100. But if I go and set it up here to 400, then the triangles become a bit decapitated. <laughs> I think it's all hidden behind that um, the body of the house. The other thing that processing has that has to do with variables is it has some built-in variables, which you can use. Um, some of those are things like Uh, they always light up pink. Things like key mouse x, which is the position, the x position of what of your mouse. So, um, I'll show you what this means. I'll explain what this is in a second. Should I should probably explain what these means first. Um, just do that one with yeah, sure. Okay. So in most processing files, it's kind of like a way that's been set up for multiple people to do it. It's like almost a format in a Word document. And this is what processing really does, where you have your void set up. You can kind of ignore void in the post of Word document, where what goes in here is all the setup for your document, so that'll be the size of it, the background of it. You can also have variable declarations in there sometimes, but that's normally being here about everything else. So like how we had x equals 100, we just have the outside of everything. Then you have void draw, or draw, and the way processing works is it's almost like a series of frames. You know I mean? like almost, you can like those old school films where you can like see each individual frame and it kind of plays it one by one by one by one. Um, we haven't got into animation yet, we'll cover that later, but processing works in a similar manner where it kind of draws each frame out and then you put in a new one, draws that out and puts in a new one. So what you put in void draw is normally what you want to be seen on the screen. So here, why do you have that kind of just to yes, okay. show it moving. We'll go into that later on. So, um, yeah. So here we put in a circle there, so that's what we want to see. So you could do animation with the way you can. You can do a lot of animation. With something. Yeah, we'll show you in a second. Different raw things to show that you different frames. It's kind of where. Yeah. So for instance, this is using the built-in variable, so it's looking at the x position of my mouse, so it doesn't matter where I move it y-wise. It's looking at the x position of my mouse, and it's moving it to this circle to be, or it's drawing the circle above it. So the draw function is just a loop. It's yeah, it just constantly that. happens every single frame, whatever's inside so there will happen. Each frame, like your, your mouse x, your position of your mouse is updated, so every time you move that, it registers that new position and the variable changes. So if you'd set this up like your last one without the board board set up just with that straight It would just happen the first, happen just instantly as soon as it start, it runs. Yeah. So it'll run through everything and then it'll stop running. Yeah. Um, and it'll just have that solid image. Yeah. 
If you want to remove the background there, it will be yeah. Um, the reason he has background here is, like I said, it draws whatever is in here each time. And so you want to always change the background like back to white. Because if you don't, what happens is you make traces of the you mouth. Traces of your little mouth. <laughs> and I mean, that can have some uses if you want it to. Like if you want to make um, like a drawing tool almost. Yeah. Which you can do later. That's where it will come in handy. Yeah. Do you want to just pump it out the table? Oh, wait. Yeah. Um, so oh, wait. Yeah, you can do P-Mouse Y. Yes, you can. Uh, if you want to, I can just add P-Mouse Y. Okay. Yes, so let's, let's make a stroke. And P is sort of like the main uh, position of bounce. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have other bounce things like speed of mouse or something? Um, there is like a lot of stuff you can do. Yes, yeah, so if you look. Like, uh, mouse hovering space. Um, that's all up on the reference list. The right yeah, side. this has all kinds of input. There's all these like things. Oh, yeah, but yeah. it's all there. Mouse drag. Oh, I see hold and move. Yeah. 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 It can get cool. quite weird. Um, um. Ah, so, yes, so right. This is um, so actually P mouse, P mouse stands for previous mouse. Um, sorry about the confusion there. Um, so for instance, for the drawing program that I'm gonna just tr r create right now, and you guys can create, uh, we use P mouse, and then we can also use just mouse. So yeah, so processing always stores the previous mouse position and the current mouse position, um, which is useful for this case because um, what we can do is make this slightly bigger. What we can do is we can just continuously while we're going through the draw, draw a line between the previous mouse position and the current one, which just creates a drawing program, which is constantly drawing. Um, so yeah. So yeah, that's how you can do that. Um, it's quite simple to create a drawing program. Uh, you could also use other inputs, like if, a, if the mouse is pressed down, then do the drawing, but um can look at that later. Are you guys following along so far? Yeah. Do you have any questions? Can you change the background? Like can you make the background? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Um yeah, let's go into using variables in this case. Yeah, I put some variables in my void setup that would make me Okay. Yeah, so there's so there is a thing called scope with variables. So uh, anything. This, so what you would normally do is you'd go up here and create anything that you want to use basically everywhere inside your program. You'd go up here and create it. So let's create an integer and call it um, let's call it circle x. And then inside the actual setup you would go through and actually set that to a number. Um, because if you create it inside, if you create anything like a variable inside here, the program will basically just plus it out once it's done going through the setup. Um, because it won't need it anymore. Uh, well, it will think that it won't need it anymore. Um, so it, you won't be able to access it when you're trying to, to draw things. As it, as it tries to keep um, you from completely breaking your computer by overloading it with memories. Um, but yeah. So now we've got a integer and we're going to set it to 50 to start with. Let's do some animation with this. Make a little bit of a gray background. Why? Why just make it equal circle X actually, and we can see a change. Oh, oh yeah. No, no. Nope. Sure. 
let's do that. Then you wouldn't notice he's a cyborg. Nope, this is fine. Um, so what we're doing every frame, what we're going to do is we're going to set um, is we're going to set the background to be uh, the same as Circle X's color or Circle X's number, and then we're going to add one to what Circle X is every frame. So what that's going to result in is, if I'm real fast here, a lightening frame as it increases in color, and then. It'll start to go through other colors. Um, I think it'll just go through blue because it's, we're, we have numbers above what would normally be handed into it. Um, but yeah, so you can see it changing. Yeah? Uh, so yeah, so if you have one number into anything that, so anything that accepts RGB uh, we'll also accept one number instead, and then that'll just treat it as grayscale, so it'll put them into each category. So if you put 255, it'll be F just white. If you put zero, then it'll be just black. Um, and then beyond that, see, it sort of goes beyond. Um, yeah. So if we want to have some animation in here, we can create a circle instead. So let's just create a circle, and instead of its x, we will use circle x, and then give it some positioning. Alright, yeah. Oh yeah. So, so yeah. Another useful one beyond mouse and previous mouse is width and height. They are inbuilt variables and basically take whatever number is inside here um, just immediately. So you don't have to worry about making that into a variable or doing anything like that. Yeah. So if we divide that by two, it'll place it in the center width wise. Now you can see, um, as the number goes up, the circle moves along, and will eventually go off the screen. It won't move around because it just continues to have greater numbers. Um, no, uh, the grayscale is buggy when it tries to go above 255, which is why it was doing that weird um, going into blue. Um, so yeah. That circle is continuing to move along, it's just not drawing it because it's not inside the frame anymore. Um, so, yeah. If we go ahead and put a, a useful thing for seeing it, why things are going wrong, is print. And basically, uh, you can put anything inside here, or pretty much anything, and it will just start moving it to there. Sorry, print line is what you should use. Uh, has print won't put a new line. You can see down here the number increases. And you can put delays and stuff in at the same time. Yeah, you can put you can put various things in. Um, if you want to slow it down, you might just want to make it into a float and then put less of a number plus and make things like that. Um, yeah, everyone got that? Everyone got a circle that moves across the screen? Cool. Cool. So let's make it a little bit easier to see by making a circle a bit bigger. And also black on the screen. And then, uh, yeah, so it will move across the screen, and then it will fall off the end. Uh, but we don't really want that. What we want is for it to continue moving across the screen, we want continuous animation. So let's go ahead and make it 
move back. So, in order to check when it reaches the end of the thing, we can use an if, which is sort of like everything else uh, in that you give it something. So in this case, you give it a conditional, which is a statement. So in this case, we're talking. So in this case, we're talking if circle x is greater than the width. So once it gets over the width of the window. Then with the if statement, um, with the if function statement command, uh, we generally call a statement. Um, you use these little squiggly braces like you do with the draw <laughs> and setup in order to tell it what you do if <laughs> blank is out. So what should we do if we want to bring it back to the beginning? If we want to bring it back to the beginning, we should put in a zero here. And that's basically because of the grid that we saw here. Once it reaches the width, it goes over here, that everything inside the if statement will run because it's inside the squiggly braces. And it's saying, if it's over that, it'll run. And it'll set it back to zero. And it should start going back. So you can run that and try that. You want. And you'll see, if I try to put back on, that circle moves along. And once it reaches there, it will pop back over to the other side. And we'll just keep doing that. So, yeah, so I'm going to wait for my 
So you have to be under 255, because otherwise it goes. Every, every child's dream. Yeah. Beyond, yeah, yeah. beyond the recognizable yeah. amount. So there you go. We have circles. Changes, and then I go, you'll go above 255. Yeah. Um, so you can also do the same sort of thing in the like a new if statement uh, yeah. and uh, check when it goes over 255 and then set it to a different number. Stuff like that. Could I do, do I have to do if, 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 what, like, do I have to make statements for each You have to make them separate ones. Okay. Or you could just set one and then decide to change all of them once x goes okay. once y. How do I do that? So, oh, but everything that happens within this universe is happens when this is triggered. Oh, okay. So you can put whatever you want to, but y equals this, z equals this, x equals this, however many things you want inside there. And the, um, It would probably be more troublesome to actually do it that way. Okay, so I was just talking with Etienne about this, but do you guys notice how when it reaches the end, it's a bit jumpy because you can still see half a circle before it goes back? Um, yeah, so it jumps at the end. Especially if you have a larger circle. If right. you watch when yours reaches the end. We'll just so increase the sizing of this temporarily. Um, we're just going to add a new variable just to play with it a bit. So, so radius. in radius. And that will basically just tell us the radius of the circle. You can also add in values at the top itself. Yeah. You don't need to do, do it do within way. setup. Um, um, depends on what it is, and depends on how you're using it, um, and depends on who's programming it. Yes, I said it. We'll make this a thicky boy. One hundred. Yeah. Yeah, that should be good. So yeah, if so you look here, like once it gets to the end of it, you can see that it jumps about halfway through, kind of the disappearing point. And that's because it's calculating it from like the center point. So there's still that other half that gets left behind. An easy way to fix that is just in your if statement here, you can just say if circle x is greater than the width plus the radius. And so that way it's like rather than checking at that 600 mark, it checks at that 600, at that 700 mark when that center point crosses it. And you can then do circle x equals negative radius so that when it pops back on the screen, it starts off screen almost. So we can just watch that transition here. Hopefully, it works. I get everything right. So, yeah, here you can see like it goes almost fully off the screen and then comes back. Smoothly. Hmm. I know what you're asking, but this is probably a much simpler thing. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. yeah, the other way requires a lot of creation. Um, yeah. But yeah. Are we all following along? Shall we move on to the next sort of thing? And now you have animation. Yeah. You can allocate the token that in your your mini brackets of it out of way. I'm going to move on while Ben helps with that. What's our next topic? More conditions, ping pong. Yeah, when you get errors and stuff, look for little red underlines. That usually tells you where the errors are. Uh, you want to mess with that? Hmm? Yeah, so um, we've got it moving in one direction, and that's cool, I suppose. <laughs> Um, but let's have it moving in both directions. So what we can do is we can add a boolean. Oh, do you want to know what that is? Yeah. So right now we've used two different types of variables. Uh, the integer, which, as I said earlier, uses 
uh, is basically uh, any number, negative, positive, or zero, uh, that doesn't have a point. Um, so it's a point like a period with yes, numbers yes. after. Okay. So, so yeah, um, there's also floats, which are that those numbers, numbers with points, and a bunch of other ones. Um, this one is a boolean, which is basically a variable with two numbers, with two types. It's either true, or it's false. Just if we want that something to be on or off, if we want something to be um, yeah, true or false in this case. Going back, so um, that'll be a variable that will be true when we're moving back along the screen and exactly. false when moving forward. For example, this would actually be like this statement here. We have if circle x is greater than the list of because this statement is either true or false. Like when each time I read that, it says if that's x greater than the value, know that it's false. If it is, then it's true. So that's their kind of called Boolean statement because it's only ever true or false. Yes or no. Yeah. So we're going to change these if statements. Um, in this case, we do actually want to detect. Minus radius. Uh, yeah, actually. So. Wait, 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 what's the after Boolean? Um, exactly. Yeah. We're just yeah, typing in the name. You don't have to set it true or false. Uh, we, you don't have to, but um, it's good practice. We're going to do it inside here. Ah, uh, yeah, inside the. Setup. Inside setup. Generally, generally, um, it's good coding practice to set any variables that are going to stay the same throughout the entire program. You're never going to change them up here. And set any variables that might change inside the setup. That's just, pra that's just good programming practice. You don't actually need to follow that. It's not going to cause anything to break. If you don't follow that, so we're going to check if it's so. This statement is if it's reached the end, basically, and then we're going to start going back. So in that case, we're going to say yes. Going back is true. We're going back. Now, um, some other things that uh, if statements use is actually do one more if statement. Yeah. So since those conditionals basically create a Boolean value, create if it's true or false, and then the if statement just looks at that Boolean, just looks at if it's true or false, we can just give it a Boolean. So we can just say if going back. In that case, it will either be true or false. So the if statement will be like, yep, this is fine. This is acceptable. Um, I'll just use this. We don't have to use a conditional and check if it is true or if it is false. So if we are going backwards, then um, we can go ahead and move backwards by minusing 5 off of circle x. And now, yes, the other thing that if statements can do is you can put an else statement attached to them, uh, which is basically do this if this. So do this if we're going back and otherwise do whatever is inside the else block right here. So within the squiggly braces of the else block. In this case, we're going forwards, so we want to move forwards. Oh yeah, and then in this case we don't need this because we're doing that down here. What? I 
Yeah. Yeah. So it will just reverse and keep going going because we don't have anything to check if it's hit the other side. So in that case, we can create another if one here. Yeah. So the other, another one, another thing else, uh, if statements can do. So they can have else, and they can also have else if. So in that case, you just type them as two separate words, else if, uh, which means basically if the uh, circle is over one side, do this. Otherwise, if the circle is over the other side, do this. So if circle x is less than 0, um, and we're just doing plus radius so that it bounces off the side and doesn't go halfway over and then bounce back. Um, so then we can go ahead and set, going back to false, and now, if you watch it, it should start bouncing back and forth. Oh, that's strange. Oh, I may have gotten this, let's just try something real quick. I think it might actually be the diameter, and I have been false this entire time. Yes, we've been false this time. It's not the radius, that's the diameter. Um, yeah. Apologies. <laughs> I'm just going to go through and change that variable name so that it's more readable. Obviously, okay, so yes. So we've created now a ball that will bounce back and forth. And that's how you do animation. Um, yeah, just with more and more different numbers, and you can change. You can add another variable for the y direction, and it can start bouncing off the corners, um, or more balls in. Yeah. Let's actually create. Let's see. We have plenty of time left. Anybody? Does anybody have any questions? Um, we could create another, where's my mouse? So we could create, let's zoom this down because we don't need this anymore. Uh, so we could create another one up here, like int circle y, and do the exact same thing. And then I'm just going to copy it and basically just put it here and then all the time change it by taking away 5 and change it by adding 5. And this, wow. Not built correctly, so it's going to bounce off the sides a little bit wrong. 
But so the reason it's yeah. doing that is because we don't have an if statement to check if it reaches the bottom in the top. So it's so it's just going down. Uh, if we make it up a bit. Oh, minus 100. If we put it a bit higher, it might, nope. A bit higher though, still. There we go. It's pretty close. Yeah, you could also put an if statement in that'll just check That's if it goes beyond the bottom. I don't fix that. <laughs> Wait, where did you put that? Oh, we haven't done that. I just made the uh, initial starting position a bit higher. But it hits the other side a little bit before it goes, like, when it hits the bottom. Mm -hmm. So now Jed's just adding, you don't need Elsa. You shouldn't use else if there. Okay, okay. Do you want to explain how if statements work like in terms of jumping ahead? Yeah, so basically, yeah, how if statements will work here. Um, we've got this new if statement here. Um, they're attached, doesn't matter, they're not attached. Um, how's it'll go if this? So if it is this, then it'll do this, and then it'll skip whatever else. Yeah, that's behind an else state. Um, otherwise, if it doesn't do this, then it'll go on and it'll look for the next else. Um, and it'll do that. So, else, if this, then do this. But if that's not the case, then it'll go looking for another else. If there isn't after that, then it'll just continue on the program and start to do that. This. Did that make any sense? Could you have not told the table to move right at the top to right the Yeah, we could have we could have put it there. Um, the issue is we want to look if it's going back because once it once it hits the edge, then it starts going back and that's no longer true. So it's no longer greater than the width. So in that case, it wouldn't move back. It would just hit the edge and start jiggling yeah, as it moves back and forth. Um, so we put it down here so that um, it will uh, do the movement depending on going back. And these basically just act as setting the going back. Oh, little fun fact. If you press Control T, it will kind of fix all your mismatched alignments. Like it'll make it look pretty. It's more of just like for you if you like seeing the code. <laughs> I do so. Yeah. See if that works. <laughs> Wait. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's got line forty-eight. Line forty-eight. What? We've got an extra. That I just. Yeah. Thank you. Ta da! There we go. Now we've got a screensaver. Will it ever touch the corner? These are the questions we must ask. But anyways, so all we did was we kind of set up this almost box around the frame with these if statements where are you touching this corner and keep going that way. Are you touching the top then go down. And that's how we use the boolean, which goes down and goes back. So you can see like all these statements here. Does the job. Does the so, job. That's all you need code to do. Yeah. 
Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. You don't need to like, copy like, all that stuff part, down. <laughs> so, you remember how we had it going back and forth? Yeah. So all that was doing was checking is it a this corner or is it a this corner where we see any product. Um, yeah, so if it's greater than the width, like if it's touching the right corner, which is uh, then side, the right side, side. the right side, right. Um, tell it to like we change going back to C so that this way it's not subtracting from the X value and that would send it backwards. Um, otherwise, if you're touching the left side, make it fall, then you start going, you start adding to the next one, making it go to the right. So you like that. And then all we did for, ooh, that's the corner. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> we pretty much uh, copy paste that, but part of the code. And all we did was we changed to change the y value. I changed to look at the y value. So if it's touching the bottom corner here, then we start going down to false so that we would start adding numbers to the y value and so on and so on. So if it touches the bottom, so the top, then we start subtracting. The, the reason it's going on angles now is because each time it draws, it checks both of these, and there'll be some change to the x and the y value. So it's like, let's say you have a center point here, you add x, so you add 5 on the x, add 5 on the y, that's a bad idea. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. yeah, so that's how you make a bouncing thing. And right now I've just removed the background drawing, so now it's just drawing over itself over and over and over again. Eventually you'll just have black. <laughs> there's a way to fix that there are any white pixels there. Yeah. Uh, there is. It. There is. Well, that actually always fully have black ones. The corners are Yeah. 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 You'll get as close to black as possible. But not we can see if it hits the corners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Everyone everyone got that? Good good down. Yeah. Yeah. Um so we've got quite a while left. We'll probably end this early, but let's do one extra little thing. Uh, which is probably going to look real weird because we've changed this program so much. But instead of making one circle, let's make four of them. Um, let's make three of them. This is going to get confusing if we're making four of them. Let me just write this and then I'll talk about it. Function for the circles and call that multiple times in your draw function to regions. Yes, yes, you could. You could as well. Do that. Coding 101, that's coding 102. <laughs> that's next time. Functions are next time. Um, I'm gonna, yeah. Uh, meaning to be, you keep coding other things. So, Yo, I'm sorry, I'm going to meet him. Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. That was Thank you for coming out. Out. Hope you had a good time. So you remember how Learned I something. said void draw kind of works as frame by frame? It'll draw something and it'll draw over that and keep going over that. What a board does is that within each frame, it allows you to draw multiple things. So it's almost like an animation within an animation. No, it's... So, each frame, each frame we draw whatever is inside. The we do whatever. Um, the for loop effectively does whatever is inside itself multiple times. 
So every frame, it'll do this, then it'll do this a bunch of times, so in this case, three times, and then it'll continue and do all this, um, which allows you to basically duplicate things uh, if you don't want to spend ages writing the code or don't know how many times you're going to duplicate it each time. So as you can see, um, in this case, you draw. Sorry, I keep clicking Control S because somebody didn't know how to save their code. This is all one. Drawing three circles. They're going to close together. But so you could just space them out by the diameter. Yeah, you could just yeah oh yeah add the diameter to it. Oh yeah. What? Do you? Yes. Well, you're going to place them into the same place. Oh, yeah. When oh, my God. The, oh, yeah, do you mean my time diameter? <laughs> no, I'll figure this out. Okay, whatever. I'll let you do it. Um, this is scuffed. Hey! Yeah. You don't uh, agree with them? Um, it allows you to draw multiple of the same we're just doing it with one. This is not the best use of our loop since we're using two lines of code to make three objects. It should have been done in three lines of code, but but there are much. Um, once you start making projects with it, you'll definitely find uses for it. Definitely did. So yeah, you can do whatever calculations or drawing things or whatever you want inside there. You're gonna draw plenty of them. They're gonna be gonna go off the screen. They will do no such thing. So no, this is where you can see like the usefulness of it coming in, where instead of writing 20 lines of code, you just write three in a corner. Yeah. And basically, so the syntax, how you, how you make a for loop is you write four, and then inside these, you put three little areas separated by semicolons. Uh, the first one creates a variable, uh, usually, usually you would call it i, uh, just as programming convention. Um, then you have a conditional of like, till when should we keep repeating? In this case, we're doing if I, while i is under 20, which is basically just means yeah, do it 20 times. You start at zero, I, but, but, and the last thing is uh, what the increment is. So what what do you do every single time? So in this case, it's i plus plus. Basically, that's just a real easy way of doing i plus one. Well, have so it's the same two. as if you do. Oh no, it's not. Okay, yeah. you want plus one. Let me. You want plus one. <laughs> Let me take no. this. <laughs> so <laughs> let me pick that, uh, I plus plus is equivalent to you going i equals i plus, oh, plus one. Equal, uh, plus yeah. Or, or another useful thing is if you go i plus equals one. You can also do minus minus. Yep, yeah, you can also do minus minus. Um, minus yeah. Minus. And minus equals, um, just to do real quick. Can you do that by the quads and plus plus and other variables? Yeah, you can do that anywhere. It's oh, it's just it's the exact same. So yeah. So what we could do down here, actually, to shorten these, is to just go. And what I was tempted to, but thought it might be a bit a lot to take in. So you can go and shorten these to just plus equals and minus equals. And then this will run the exact same. Oh, yeah, those are all equivalent. Yeah. So then, if we also want to make it real weird, we can go ahead and do. Um, so yeah, better way to do this is. Just, Yeah, you can always you can add other calculations. For instance, this one is creating all those circles after it does um, based on the circle y. 
And you can see just the top one counts for bouncing because that's the one where circle Y actually is and circle X actually is. Uh, the bottom ones are just added on um, as extras. Questions? Or the full end? Cool. Yeah. And if you need any other help, go look at the um, language reference, the processing reference thing. It has anything you could ever want, like, oh, hey, what, how do you check if a mouse is clicked? Oh, look at this. This is some code. Let's copy this. And let's um, go ahead and create a new program. Just paste that in. Then if you hit run, for some reason this one didn't put a size. Standardization though, right? Like, so when you draw a circle or a rectangle, the first two of the position and the next three will uh, the shape of oh. uh, the side. Um, so, it depends on what shape you're trying to draw. Like, with the circle, you need to give it its width, like its radius, or like its diameter. But with a rectangle, you don't necessarily need to give it that, it's like just giving it the two points. Oh, uh, yeah, not height, like, not first position and then height uh, and width. No, but then you're going to have to get the first points and then not optimize it to the smallest yeah. amount of variables that are required. That you can throw like one for me. So this one just checks when your mouse is clicked, which is all this code. And that was just copied directly from the um, example. Yeah. From the example. Uh, yeah, so if you want to create new ones, it's just the same as like a text document, you hit new. Um, you can save by hitting save and then saving to anything. You can open just like a text editor, just like Word or whatever other program you ever want to use. But yeah. So there you go. That's processing. The basics of processing. Um, Yeah, and with all of these, you can see things that are related to them. So if we go into circle, you can see also, oh look, ellipse is related to it. Because it's just a circle that's sort of different. <laughs> that allows you to make it an oval. Uh, and also arc is related to an ellipse, because it's half a circle. Or it's a part of a circle, part of an ellipse. Oh, and let's, let's look at the radians thing. You can go into a deep rabbit hole of... Okay, I've reached the end of the rabbit hole, but... <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of things. There's structure things. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of these have examples. Um, if you ever look at... If you want to... Yes. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of examples. Oh, yeah. If you want to look at any specific examples... Um, you can hit file and then just examples and that brings up and that where did it bring it up oh this thing's running that's why it's not bringing it up there it is file examples file examples Okay, it's not liking me for some reason. Oh, no, but it takes you there. It opens up the web page. No, it should open up this. It, it should open up a little. Um, if, if you actually do it on your computer, for some reason it's not liking me. But it should open up a little um, dialogue, a little um, yeah, folder thing with a bunch of different folders and all of examples based on things. Um, if you want to see the Boy uh, Boyd's program, which I based my project last year on, that's in there. Um, Want to see some simulations of like chain physics, orbital physics, stuff like that? That's all in there. Um, fire, I think there's one. There's some game of life. There's some games. 
think there's Pong. I think there's Pong in there. Um, if you want to play Pong. If you want to play Pong, make it on Scratch. But yeah. Yeah, that's processing. Thank you. Cool. Thanks for coming. Thank you.